Hello, it is Thursday, the 16th of July, 2020. Wow. Again, I worked through this evening. I'm glad business has picked up for me. It's sad that it's all CPS. I drove out to Mineral Wells, Texas today, which is about 85 miles from my front door, uh, to handle um, an investigation case. Um, so, not just a typical CPS, but a little bit more involved. I can see why they took me out there, because usually stuff that's criminal, I mean, there's child abuse, which is kind of criminal anyway, but there's sometimes there's certain cases that get kind of elevated to a higher level. Um, and so I was involved in helping with that. Um, but kind of a sad case, but, uh, the police is getting involved and doing what they're supposed to do and, uh, got statements and stuff. So, um, yeah. So I had to put my, um, not just translator, but my attitude of, you know, along with the, uh, police basically, um, or with the enforcement investigation, uh, detective work. So, um, I'm good. Apparently I'm good at it because they were, uh, I was sent all the way out there, uh, to help out with it. <clears throat> and I've gotten this reputation for being able to handle the more delicate, sensitive cases. Um, but yeah, it was a doozy of a case. <laughs> and then while I was there, they texted me like, how soon are you going to be done? Because there's another case that just popped up. <laughs> it's just like, oh my God. Uh, so then I ran back to Dallas and then went to far southeast Dallas County to handle another case. And then this evening I ended up doing a parenting class via Zoom. Uh, and I've done those parenting classes translated for the Spanish speakers before, but in person I've never done it via Zoom. And actually that went pretty smoothly. They've got it figured it out. Uh, some of the Zoom meetings I've had or where I've translated via Zoom not always the best results. I can tell it's not going smoothly, but this one was surprisingly smooth. So, yay. It's just kind of a little bit shocking, this uptick in abuse that's happening. Um, normally, I always handle, you know, court cases and CPS cases and hospital cases. But for a solid week, all I've been doing is nonstop CPS cases and a lot of emergencies and removals and you know, you hear on the news that it's um, there's been an uptick in family violence and domestic violence. And I'm sad to report, but based on what I'm experiencing right now, yes, there has been. This, um, this is a side effect of this social isolation and quarantining uh, that people are doing. People are just not being nice to each other and not treating kids well. Or kids are getting completely neglected while the parents duke it out, literally. So, you know, it would be good if everybody could go back to work and every the kids could go back to school. But, of course, schools aren't going to reopen. And like in the Dallas, they pushed back the opening of school. Well, not opening the school. They're going to start school but uh, virtually, and then they're going to hopefully have classes. But they pushed that date for when the kids would actually go to school till later. That was just announced today. Which is good. I'm sure a lot of teachers are giving a big sigh of relief. But I still think, I think it's September 7th where it's pushed back to. Still kind of soon considering what's going on. But it's better to push it back a little bit. Uh, we'll see what the numbers are at that point in time. So just work, 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 work. Dealing with very sad cases. Um, it is a little disheartening sometimes when you're seeing how violent people are to each other. But at the same time, I know by intervening, we've stopped that cycle of violence. So people ask me all the time how I handle some of these grim, grim cases. And um, the way I handle it is keep reminding myself we actually are intervening and stopping any further abuse. Or in some cases, you know, now law enforcement's involved and people are being arrested and so on. Um, so that's putting a stop to what's going on. But then there's certain cases sometimes that are just so monstrous and horrific that, um, one thing you learn to do as a worker, a uh, CPS worker, as well as police investigators, because I work with police and detectives, as well as us interpreters, is you have to develop, and this sounds very strange, very new agey, but you do have to develop what we call a ritual to be able to shed the ickiness of what's going on, 
so that you can live with yourself better. And um, when I first heard about this, I was like, yeah, whatever. You know, it's not a too new age philosophy to, for me. But I discovered that, yeah, indeed, it does help. And I meditate a lot, and that helps with my daily coping of stress. But, you know, when you have an extreme case where, you know, a child has died or, you know, you've got a kid that's 12 years old or 13 years old and she's been raped multiply by family members uh, or they've been rescued from sex slavery and they're still a kid and uh, you hear these stories and you meet these people and there's such gruesome stories. You have to find a way to First, you have to learn how to disassociate so you don't get caught up emotionally in it while you're doing the job and you have to maintain your cool, which I'm apparently I'm very good at because I've gone into very high pressure situations. Um, and that's why people request me but or I'm sent to them. Um, but also you need to find a way to kind of help shake it off afterwards. And I'm someone, because I grew up in Mexico, um, we never really had hot water. Our water was tepid. By American standards, the water was cold. <laughs> So, um, I never really had a hot shower and I don't like hot showers. I like my showers very lukewarm on the cool side. Most people say it's just so cold. I don't know how you can shower in that. But what I will do is I will blast the hot water really hot. I have a special loofah and a special soap, you know, foaming soap. And I will exfoliate from head to toe. Completely. I will scrub my skin, remove every top layer of dead skin, and I'll just take a long, hot, hot cleansing shower, and then I go and scrub my teeth, floss them like crazy so the mouth, my mouth feels extra, and you, I've got a tongue scraper and scrape my tongue. So I basically like wash off everything. Now, um, it's interesting because I've met some of workers and investigators and police officers, and then we've talked about how we have to have developed this ritual because it's something that people just do. And there's one worker who, um, she was telling me her, what she does is she has an area in her home with a nice little rug, a nice little table. She's got a special candle, a chair, a really comfy chair, and with a lovely lamp, and she will read a section of the Bible, not randomly. Like she starts from the front cover to the back cover. And she's done this job for like 20 years. And she said, I have read that Bible cover to cover countless times because she'll just read a whole chapter um, or a whole section uh, for about an hour. She said, I'll sit down. I put a little timer on 45 minutes to an hour, depending on the hour of the day and how tired I am. And I will just almost meditate as I read the Bible. And she said, I'm not a particularly very religious person. But somehow or other, just this little ritual is like it gets my mind off of everything. And I feel so much more relaxed afterwards. There was one detective out in Fort Worth, and I nicknamed him Yosemite Sam. And he even joked, he said, yeah, I kind of look like Yosemite Sam. And that's why I gave him the nickname. He's big old beer belly, handlebar mustache, big old glasses, wears a cowboy hat. He is a brilliant detective, one of the smartest, most intelligent people I've ever met. But if you looked at him, you would think he was good old Bubba drinking beer down at the corner and probably hooting and hollering on the weekends, but he's not. He's very educated. He just has his whole Texan thing down. And in one case, we were discussing it during a small break what our rituals were. And so I was mentioning mine that I scald my skin, basically. Uh, and this worker, she was, does the Bible thing. And he said, I bake cookies. And we go, cookies? And he said, yeah, but I'm not talking about just like buying a tube of, you know, cookie dough, cutting it up and throwing it in the oven. No, I do it from scratch. And I'm not talking about chocolate chip cookies. I'm talking, I'm doing little French canapé type cookies with a raspberry jam that I make myself. And he said, you know, and I decorate them. And then I do like a lace pattern on it. And so I'm imagining this, this big old Yosemite is making these very dainty little girly little cookies. And he said, and then I just make a, I don't just make a dozen. I make a big batch of them. Usually 24 to 36 of these very fancy cookies. It takes me a good couple of hours to make it. But by the time I'm done and they're finished baking, I am just totally distressed. And my wife knows I had a rough day at work because I baked some cookies.
So that was his method of de-stressing. And it was like the image of this man, Yosemite Sam, baking these delicate little cookies, French cookies. It was just very comedic. But uh, yeah, that's something you have to do so that you can just de-stress and unwind when you have a really rough day. So um, that's a tip. And I remember when it was taught to me, uh, you know, when I was starting to do this work and there was a lesson in this. Um, the other thing is to always have cool water by you because sometimes when you get involved in it, even though you're disassociating, they said you will feel like your body is starting to burn up. And I was like, what? This makes no sense. Well, the first time I ended up doing a hostage negotiation and I'm translating for the hostage negotiator, I felt my body get hot. It, I'm not, what wasn't running a fever. I literally felt, even though very cool, disassociated, I'm not getting emotionally involved, I'm just translating, I'm trying to be as effective as possible, sound empathetic, do everything right, but keep my emotional distance from what's happening so I could do my job. I did feel like my body started to heat up. And it was so interesting because they trained us that, does it have some water always available, some cool water, because you will start to feel hot. And the first time that ever happened to me, I was like, they weren't lying. So if you're ever under really high stress and taking that sip of cool water periodically, even though you may not be feeling thirst, also does something psychological and chemical to your body because you stay hydrated, first of all, but also gives you like a pause uh, to just simply taste cold water kind of pulls you out of the situation just for those few seconds so that when you continue, you continue being as objective as possible. So those are some of the trips and handle how to handle high stress moments and what you need to do and how to unwind and not let you affect you psychologically. Because as one, as one person once said, the last thing we need is the interpreter to arrive and then freak out as to what's going on. And unfortunately, that does happen from time to time. And you're not been in instances where I know with a elderly abuse case that I were che we were checking out, all of a sudden... The patient we were checking out who was abandoned in her home had a grand mal seizure. And, you know, this condition of the home was so, it was such a sad situation. But, you know, I'm doing my job. And the worker, the CPS worker, she was very young, started to freak out. She didn't know, she never seen a grand mal seizure. I had never seen one. I'd seen videos of it, but I'd never seen one live. And, um, but I remembered exactly what my training was for what to do when someone is in that, that's starting to happen. And so the worker was like freaking out. Oh my God, oh my God, what do we do? What do we do? And it's like, you're going to call 911 right now. Dial 911. Oh, Dial 911. I'm going to make sure this woman is on the ground safely. She doesn't bite her tongue uh, off, um, you know, and um, keep an eye on her. And then she was afterwards, she's like, you were so calm, cool, and just took over. You were just in control of the situation. Like, you're here to work do the work for us here, CPS, and I lost it, and you just, like, just took over. Uh, thank you, you know, but, um, again, it's, I, for whatever reason, I've had this knack of being able to keep my cool in the middle of crisis. Now, afterwards, I'll go, ah, and freak out, but during it, I'm the person that can handle it. The same thing with, the, like, the, um, the hostage situation, uh, it was quite interesting. I, I know I do 911 every now and then, and some of those calls can pretty be pretty intense. Uh, but, you know, I keep my calm, cool, and collect. So that's why I do what I do. And I guess that's why I keep doing what I do, because apparently I'm good at it, because people will request me. So anyway, that's my story for today. COVID numbers, I, I feel like a broken record, are horrible. Just horrible. It's getting worse everywhere across the country. Uh, Florida is doing it. Florida actually now surpassed Texas. We were number three. We're now number four in the country, but that's not a good number four because the numbers are pretty high and keep escalating. And the same here in Dallas County. So we're just kind of on our own, but at least the teachers are getting a bit of a reprieve. Yay. That's a good thing. All right. Have a good night. If you see this tonight, have a good evening. If you watch it tomorrow during the day, good morning or good afternoon. Don't forget to like, subscribe, uh, ring that notification bell and uh, feel free to share this video. If you ever know somebody who wants to be an interpreter, you can share some of these stories that I'm telling on, on camera here uh, to your wannabe interpreter friends. Um, anyway, have a very good one. Bye. Ah, wear your mask. Ah.